The Roots of Creativity. Today, I'd like to talk about creativity. What is it that drives us to create? Why do we pick one avenue of expression over another? When you're talking about creative projects that do not have an underlying profit motive, does it matter a hill of beans whether they are created or not? When you are creating, are you generating the ideas? Or are you merely a vessel for translating and transmitting the expression of a divine source? Improvising jazz musicians often talk of being a conduit for the music which flows through them, rather than the originator of the music. Perhaps we can use the metaphor that their years of woodshedding attuned them to some subtle and sensitive radio frequency that streams musical expression. The more you practice, the closer you zero in on this ephemeral frequency, getting a stronger and stronger signal. And, whether it is fair or not, some people are born with a more sensitive internal radio, allowing them to dial in the strongest signal possible, more quickly and easily than others. Why are some people born with perfect pitch? Perhaps the particular configuration of their neural pathways are optimized to help them learn and perform music, giving them an immediate advantage over the rest of us, at least when it comes to playing by ear. Getting back to our original question, why do we want to make things? Well, creation originally had a major survival component. Humans that created tools had a natural advantage over those who didn't. Think of the proto-human ape that bashes in the skull of the boar at the beginning of 2001 A Space Odyssey. He and his tribe are going to do a whole lot better than the other apes that are foraging for berries or taking what's left of the carcass after the jaguar is done with it. It is our drive as a species to constantly improve our tools, inventing new ones and iterating on the old ones to endlessly make more money, be more efficient, or extract some resource from our planet. It is this drive that has led us to the world we now live in, where we stand teetering on the edge of planetary catastrophe due to climate change or nuclear war. However, it is that same drive that will hopefully lead us back from the brink. Humans want to survive, both individually and as a species. The next decades will tell the tale. Whether we have the global will to switch to clean energy solutions, whether we can figure out a reliable methodology to sequester the carbon dioxide that is smothering our planet like a wool blanket, and whether the keys to the nuclear arsenal are left in the possession of much wiser folks than currently hold them at the beginning of 2018. So zooming out from creativity as a mechanism for survival, let's look at a more first-world endeavor, creating art for art's sake. So then why are we as a species driven to self-expression? Why did I take the time to write this essay, then videotape it and post it like a message in a bottle in a sea that is overflowing with messages and bottles? Why do kids draw pictures? Why do adults paint with watercolors, cast clay pots, invent new recipes that blend mangoes and chili powder? blog on websites, play the French horn, tattoo their bodies with intricate designs and pictures, design board games, decorate their house with scary skeletons for Halloween, spray graffiti on the underpass, or draw pictures of animals on the wall of a cave. As far as I can tell, it is this innate desire to express yourself that lies at the root of all these activities. We create because we have to. We create because it's fun. We create because we want to educate or entertain. We create because creativity is a muscle, and the more we create, the more we want to create. We create because it feels good. We create because, in the same way that giving is more rewarding than receiving, creating is more rewarding than consuming. We create because this endlessly rich world that we live in would be a whole lot more drab and colorless if we didn't. We create because creativity unlocks the human spirit, freeing us from the shackles and burdens of our everyday existence. We create because we're curious. We create because we want to push ourselves past our internally imposed limits. We create because we have to, whether anyone else ever experiences the fruit of our labor or not. We create because our creations live beyond us. This is a blanket that my mother crocheted and gave me decades before her passing. It still sits on the couch in my living room, where it is a daily physical reminder to my kids and myself of her love for us. We create because we are inspired by the creations of others. We create because our passion for a medium leads us to want to work in that medium. 
If I look back on it far enough, my entire professional career leads back to the creative works of Paul McCartney and George Lucas, and all the creative people whose shoulders they stood on. We create because that's what we do. The digital revolution has brought incredible new means of expression to anyone with a computing device and an internet connection. Anyone with those ubiquitous tools can create an animated movie, write a song, draw an image that can be shared with anyone who cares to see it. We can opine on current events, film our cats and kids doing ridiculously awesome and hilarious things, and show how fast we can ride, how high we can climb, and how far we can run. But of course, this is a two-edged sword. The incredible ubiquity and variety of information available to us at all times can be a huge distraction and impediment to creativity. Rather than making something, we get caught up in email, the latest meme, texts and calls from people that interrupt our flow, and watching the idealized, surface version of the lives lived by folks we went to high school with on Facebook. All of these things are great, or not, but they aren't making something. Consuming is not creating. In addition, kids that grow up just playing with tablets and smartphones don't know how to knock together a sled from scrap wood. They don't know how to take apart a radio to see what is making the voices inside. They don't know how to draw with a pencil, how to play music on an acoustic piano, how to write a letter longhand and mail it to someone. Now, I'm far from a Luddite and have been an avid technologist since my early teens. I don't want to sound like grumpy old gramps pining for the good old days. But until this point, through the entire lineage of recorded history, entertainment technology has been relatively limited. Kids made things with their hands. They improvised. They used their imagination to turn thimbles into doll cups, sticks into machine guns, and blankets into superhero capes. This type of imaginative play is critical for childhood development. It helps kids practice the rules of society for when they'll need them. It allows them to role play, mimicking their parents and learning about living in the world. And it stimulates their imagination, building the confidence to try things out, the ability to quickly solve problems given a finite set of resources, and the mechanisms to create something new. Do you remember when LEGO didn't come in sets of specialized pieces to make a particular model, but when it was just a big bucket of building blocks? With that bucket, the sky is the limit. Anything a child makes might not be particularly fancy, but it is theirs. Instead of following the step-by-step -step rules in the LEGO booklet, the bricks get assembled to follow the design in the child's mind. Serendipity and spur-of-the-moment creativity went out over learning to follow a recipe. And by the way, I think building with LEGO by following the recipe is also terrific. It teaches any number of valuable skills, including mapping 2D objects on the printed page to the 3D bricks in your hand. But building just to build, just to see where it goes, promotes creativity, problem solving, and abstract thinking that will lead today's kids to be tomorrow's architects, scientists, and engineers. iPads are great, and there are a plethora of educational experiences to be had on a tablet that do an amazing job of helping kids grow. But to gain the real-world experience they need to live in the real world, there is no substitute for kids creating with real objects. Okay. Today's dose of creative energy has now been spent, but I can't sign off without this call to action. If your life feels a little short on creating stuff, then go out and make something. It really doesn't matter what. It'll do wonders for your soul and for the people around you. Share your ideas with the world. Put another message in another bottle, just like this one, and throw it out into the ocean to lift the spirits of someone you don't know and will never meet. Peace.